Van Jones receiving the NAACP President's Award. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In Chile, rescue workers are searching for survivors under the rubble following Saturday's massive 8.8 .8 earthquake, one of the strongest in recorded history. More than 700 people were killed, with the number expected to rise. Chilean President Michelle Bachelet has announced emergency measures to deal with the destruction. She said one and a half million people have been affected by the earthquake and declared a state of catastrophe. A curfew has been put in place in some areas. The quake heavily damaged many of the country's roads, airports and ports. It also triggered a tsunami that killed at least four people and caused serious damage to at least one port town, Concepcion, Chile's second largest city, about 300 miles south of Santiago, uh, one of the hardest hit of the cities. The mayor has said food is running out and the situation is getting out of control. Thousands of people remain homeless. The army has been sent in to support local police. Security officials use tear gas and water cannons to disperse crowds who took food and supplies from a supermarket in Concepcion. But according to The New York Times, law enforcement authorities, heeding the cries of residents that they lacked food and water, eventually settled on a system that allowed staples to be taken, but not televisions and other electronic goods. Even as the people of southern Chile continue to grapple with death toll and the devastation wrought by the massive earthquake, many seismologists believe the wreckage could have been far worse. The 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake earthquake that struck Chile early Saturday morning was 500 times more powerful than the 7.0 magnitude quake that struck Haiti on January 12th, but it caused only a fraction of the casualties in comparison with the 300,000 people estimated to have died in Haiti. Seismologists suggest one reason for the difference in scale is that Chile enforced building codes for earthquake-resistant structures after the experience of a 9.0 magnitude earthquake 50 years ago in 1960. Earthquake expert Roger Billum argues it is quality of building construction and not simply the strength of the tremor that poses the most danger during an earthquake. He warns some of the fastest growing cities in the global south are also those facing significant seismic hazards, and the rapid pace of haphazard construction in these cities puts some 400 million people at risk. Billum was among the first seismologists to visit Haiti after the earthquake, and in a recent article in Nature magazine calls for the enforcement of earthquake-resistant construction guidelines. University of Colorado professor of geology and co-author with Susan Elizabeth Ho of After the Earthquakes, Elastic Rebound on an Urban Planet, Roger Billum joins me now from Denver, Colorado. We welcome you to Democracy Now! It's very good, good to morning. have you with us. Um, Roger, can you start off by explaining the magnitude of the earthquake that has hit Chile and the uh, scope of the damage. Yes, a magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake is one of the biggest that you can have on the planet. In fact, the very largest we, we know about also happened in Chile in 1960, as you rightly point out. It had a magnitude of 9.5, um, much bigger than the, the one that's just occurred. However, the death toll in Chile during that earthquake was only 1,600 people. Uh, we may reach... Um, we may reach four figures in this earthquake, but we have to think of this as a, a, a tremendous success story. Uh, Earthquake-resistant construction prevails throughout Chile. They have an intelligent government that uh, enforces these regulations, uh, and they have constant reminders of what earthquakes can do. So although uh, a, a tremendous number of buildings have been damaged, um, the buildings are damaged to the point that people can walk out of them. In Haiti, this did not occur. The buildings were shaken violently and completely pancaked in many cases because there was no earthquake resistance at all. And although Haiti has a history of earthquakes uh, stretching back to the same period of time, Christopher Columbus obviously um, uh, arrived in 1492, um, we don't know about earthquakes before then. Although Haiti has this extraordinary long history of earthquakes, the local government was completely unaware of, their, of, of the potential effects of bad building practices. And when you talk about bad building practices, what exactly do you mean? What did Chile have that Haiti didn't have? 
Well, there, there are, um, first of all, there are various things that, that uh, en earthquake engineers insist on. Uh, the survival of certain critical f structures, uh, like hospitals, schools, fire stations, and so on. Um, the, those have to survive earthquakes intact and operate the next you know, few minutes after the shaking stopped. It turns out that some, some of these hospitals have been damaged, but probably not as many as could have. Now, what, what do you do to make a building uh, safe from earthquakes? Uh, you need good quality foundations. Um, most buildings now going up are uh, known as concrete skeleton designs. They, they have a, a structure of steel um, w in, embedded in, in concrete. And you have to make sure you have the right kind of steel. If you use brittle steel, for example, the, the steel is simply snapped during an earthquake. If, what you need is ductile steel. It costs a little bit more. In Haiti, it was all brittle steel, uh, steel without ribbon, even the, the little corrugations that hold um, the concrete together when, when a shaking commences. Um, there are uh, little structural members that look as though they're, they're in place simply to hold um, uh, the steel in, in place during pouring of the cement, those things called stirrups. In fact, those, the stirrups used in, in Haiti were very weak, uh, almost chicken wire type uh, strength, whereas in, uh, in Chile, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we, they, they applied the, the, the appropriate strength and thickness. And what these little, little pieces of metal do is stop the columns from exploding during uh, uh, the violent vertical shaking in an earthquake. Um, then the quality of the cement matters. If you um, mix three parts of sand to one part of concrete, which is something they never tell you in school, but which most construction people know, uh, you get good quality cement that doesn't fall to pieces in an earthquake. However, if you uh, go down the beach and shovel some beach sand into a, a wheelbarrow and take it back to your building site without washing it or without uh, checking you know, exactly what it's got in it, it might have dirt or soil or it might have salt in, you f finish up with a very weak uh, cement. And it's all too tempting if you're building your own house, as must have occurred frequently in Haiti, to take um, uh, four parts of sand or five parts of sand, making an extremely weak cement. Uh, another thing is the addition of aggregate. When you, when you build strong buildings, as, uh, uh, as an earthquake engineer would certainly be doing in Chile, Chile and have done, um, you use a, a, a very angular kind of aggregate. Uh, if you use uh, rounded pebbles, the pebbles don't grab on the cement and they just fall to, fall to pieces. Uh, so there, there are a number of very obvious things that can be done, and uh, unfortunately, people are not how, told how to do do this. And uh, you know, very frequently, um, uh, uh, the, the 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 lowest paid workers uh, turn up at a construction site, and they're told to you know mix some cement, follow what that man is doing over there, and, and assemble it. Well, if there's an engineer on on board, it gets done right. If the man does it on his own, he's he may well be copying um, uh, incorrect. Practices and, and as a result, Haiti has duplicated a, a series of catastrophic um, designs um, that are weak from the foundations up, and, uh, and, and consequently fell down. Uh, Professor Billum, are there an increased number of earthquakes? I mean, this weekend you have what happened in Chile. Also, wasn't there a small one in Pakistan? And then, of course, you had um, the horror in Haiti. On